that the view hub will not be rotating. The next part I would like to insert will be the upper sway links. So we need two of them. So we go to insert component, look for the upper sway link, and place one part over here in the, in the graphical interface. Now, there is another method of inserting parts. Other than going to insert components, what we can do is, from the feature manager, select the parts that you want to duplicate, hold on to the control key on the keyboard, and drag this part into your graphical user interface. So there you go. It is so easy when you are designing in SOLIDWORKS. Okay, so let's rotate this part around to somewhere here. Okay, I would like these two holes to be concentric. I would like this flat face to be flush with this face. There you go. Okay, and let's repeat the process on the other side. We take the other upper sway link, rotate it a little bit. Make sure the two holes are concentric. And I would like this planar face here to be in line with this planar face here. Okay, there you go. So let's move this part a little bit. Okay, once again, if you like to reposition some of the parts and there are too many uh, moving parts in the assembly, you can always fix one of them. So in this case, I'm going to fix the oleo strut cylinder. Okay, just drag the upper sway link and make it taper downwards a little bit. Okay, once you're happy with it, okay, we right click and go to float. Now, the next thing that we want to insert will be the lower sway links. So we need two of them as well. We go to insert component and look for the lower sway link. So I'm going to place one here. And I'm going to duplicate another one at the bottom. So, yeah, let's rotate this part around. Okay. So, well, let's fix the oleo strut cylinder. Okay. So, I'm going to make these two holes concentric. And I would like this face of the upper sway link to be coincident to this face of the lower sway link. Okay. Thereafter, I would like this face of the lower sway link to be concentric to this hole of the wheel hub. Okay. And let's repeat this process on, th on the other lower sway link. So we will move this part over here, rotate it around. Okay. I'm going to make them concentric and these two faces coincident. Now make the bottom face here concentric. There you go. Of course, with the oleo strut cylinder um, that is fixed, we can move the wheel hub just to position it nicely. Alright, so that's about somewhere there. Okay. The next component that we're going to insert, uh, we won't be inserting a part, but we will be inserting the wheel assembly that you have created earlier. So in the assembly environment, not only can you insert parts, you can insert assemblies as well. So what we need to do is, let's look for the assembly under insert components. Okay. Let's browse for, browse for the assembly file. So there you go. You have the view assembly here. Okay. Let's put the wheel assembly right about there. Okay. So all we need to do is just rotate the wheel around. The first mate that I'm going to insert will be a concentric mate. So I click on the mates folder, select this hole and this cylindrical shaft. Of the wheel. Now, once I've done that, you'll notice that 
this wheel is constrained along the axis of this hole. Okay, so now what are the mates that I can use to position the wheel hub right in the middle of uh, this wheel assembly? Under the mates uh, command, there is this very useful mate called the width mate. So what the width mate does is it takes the tabs and the width selections and position this tab right in the middle of the width. So let's see how we use this command. Okay, so we go to mate under advanced mate, width mate. Under the width selections, I would like to select the width, okay, which is the two faces as seen on screen of the wheel assembly. And for the tab selections, we would like to select these two faces of the wheel hub. Once you hit OK, you should notice that the wheel hub is automatically positioned right in between the wheel assembly faces that you have selected. So once you're happy with this, just hit OK. Okay, we are almost done. Okay, last but not least, okay, let us insert one more part called the movable mount to be placed on the strut. So we go to insert components. Let's browse for the part, the movable mount. Okay, we will place it somewhere here. Now I would like this to be uh, these two faces to be parallel all the time, just to make sure that um, it stays in this orientation. And also, I would like the front plane of the movable mount to be in line with the front plane, the the front the front plane of the assembly. Okay. Now next, what we need to do is just create a co uh, concentric mate between these two holes. Okay. Now that I'm almost done, okay, let me just float this uh, oleo strut cylinder which I've fixed earlier. So just right click on it, go to float. To minimize the movement um, for mates, uh, you can insert mates that are beyond coincident or concentric like what you have seen. You are able to add um, distance between two faces or even an angle between two faces. All you need to do is to select the faces between them. So let's take for example, if I like an angle between this face of the lower sway link and this face of the upper sway link. By default, SOLIDWORKS will create a coincident mate for them. Now, but this is not what we want. We would like them to have an angle between them. So all we need to do is activate this angle button you see on the standard mates folder and key in an angle. So for this case, I would like a 120 angle between them. So hit OK. There you go. So now, this is our landing gear assembly. And if you notice, if you model it correctly, as you move the different parts, you should see the landing gear uh, move accordingly. Okay, this is the end of our tutorial. Thank you for viewing this video.